Hello friends, today I will answer the question, why do I go to church on Saturday? There is an easy answer, because God said so. Thanks for listening. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, that is the main reason why I go to church on Saturday. Because the Bible, God's word, tells me to do so. God gave the human race laws so that everything would run smoothly and in order. The Ten Commandments. Only ten laws? Should be easy, right? <laughs> well, look at the world. Anyways, one of the Ten Commandments says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. How sad that we have forgotten exactly the one commandment that starts with remember. But why did God create the Sabbath in the first place? Let's go back to the beginning to find out the reason for the special day. In Genesis 2, verse 2 to 3, we read, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. After creating the earth in six days, God rested on the seventh day. But not only that, he sanctified it. He set it apart. He declared it holy. The dictionary defines holy as something exalted, worthy of complete devotion. God, who knows what's best for us, set apart one day every week for us to celebrate creation and, more importantly, the Creator. On this day, we lay aside our own interests and contemplate God and meditate on his power and goodness. And this will awaken gratitude in us and we'll be thankful for the beautiful creation that is around us and we will worship and praise God. In other words, the Sabbath is a memorial for God's power and love. Let's read Exodus 31 verse 13. Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. And Ezekiel 21 verse 12. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Interesting. That means the Sabbath is not only a day to celebrate creation, and to rest from all the work we've done during the week, but also a sign that God sanctifies us. God is making us holy or setting us apart, and the Sabbath is like an indication or, or, or a demonstration for this to us. When I decided to give my life to Jesus and get baptized, I invited Jesus into my heart and asked him to make me holy, to sanctify me. And in turn, I keep the Sabbath holy and celebrate creation once a week. And also there's a promise attached to keeping the Sabbath. Let's read Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. Keeping the Sabbath is not a burden. I will not miss out on any fun. In contrast, the Sabbath is a cause of joy and happiness. Try it out for yourself. It's a promise. But why can't I keep the Sunday holy? Does it matter which day? Or is the Sabbath the Sunday? The answer is very simple. And there's two parts to the answer. One from the Bible and one from history. The common argument is that Jesus changed the Sabbath 
to the Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week, the Sunday. But why? If a change of this magnitude took place, there must have been an announcement, right? But no, there is none, none, nothing. On the contrary, Jesus kept the Sabbath holy during his time on earth and went to the synagogue every week on Saturday, as we can read in Luke 4 verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And in Matthew 24, 15-20, Jesus predicted the downfall and destruction of Jerusalem. And after giving details of what would happen, he gave his followers instructions, noting down signs to watch for how to escape the attack. Uh, he told them, And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. He knew that his followers would be observing the Sabbath even then. This was the last record of Jesus mentioning the Sabbath while on earth. So obviously, he must have expected them to keep the Sabbath like he taught them to and like he was keeping it himself. We also know that the apostles kept the Sabbath even after Jesus' resurrection. God's law is eternal and never changes. Jesus kept the Sabbath while he on earth and his disciples kept the Sabbath after he went to heaven. So why do most Christians worship on the Sunday? And even during early Christianity, Christians still kept the Sabbath. But then on the fateful day of March 7, 321 AD, the Roman Emperor Constantine I issued a civil decree making the Sunday the official day of rest. He wanted to unite the heathen customs of sun worship with the Christian customs of keeping the Lord's Day holy. The Sunday had been the official day of rest and feasting for most pagan religions, from the German, Saxons and Egyptians to the Romans. It was a day dedicated to their chief god, the sun. And this decree required both Christians and pagans to rest on the Sunday. Then later church fathers like Augustine of Hippo, they taught the Christians that you don't need to keep the Sabbath as the Bible describes it. This teaching was reinforced by many councils in which the Sabbath kept getting pressed lower and the Sunday was exalted. One of these councils, the Council of Laodicea, stated, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor, and as being Christians, shall, if possible, do not work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. Eventually, the Sunday became known as the divine institution, while the Sabbath just a dreary custom of the Jews. By the 6th century, it had matured into this massive organization, the Roman Catholic Church, with the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, at its head. But not only that, but not only that, the Emperor Justinian, he made the Pope the head of all churches in the Roman Empire. With this, the Roman Church became the official church of the Roman Empire. And because the Roman Empire was a global superpower of that day, the church became regarded similarly as a ruling entity for the entire Christian world, from Egypt all the way to China. And by the 12th century, the Sunday became a holy institution and the identifying mark of Christians. But throughout history, there was always a small group of people keeping the true Sabbath, even under persecution. I wanted to know what the Catholic Church themselves say about this, so I did some digging and I found a quote by Cardinal James Gibbon. Now the scriptures alone do not contain all the truths which a Christian is bound to believe, nor do they explicitly enjoin all the duties which he is obliged to practice. Not to mention other examples, is not every Christian obliged to sanctify Sunday and to abstain on that day from unnecessary servile work? Is not the observance of this law among the most prominent of our sacred duties? But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday 
a day which we never sanctify. Even the Catholic Church admits that there is no biblical foundation to keep the Sunday holy. <laughs> but it gets even better. In the Catholic magazine you can read, Protestants accept Sunday rather than Saturday as the day for public worship after the Catholic Church made the change. But the Protestant mind does not seem to realize that in observing Sunday they are accepting the authority of the spokesman for the church, the Pope. That's crazy, man. The Catholic Church says that by observing the Sunday, you automatically accept the authority of the Pope. That also means that if you really want to be a Protestant, you have to keep the Sabbath, not the Sunday holy. But these are not the only quotes. There are 30 more official quotes by the Catholic Church admitting to changing the Sabbath to the Sunday. I will attach a link in the description where you can read them on your own. It's worth it. But I have to share my absolute favorite quote by the Catholic Church. Perhaps the boldest thing, the most revolutionary change the Church ever did, happened in the first century. The holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday. The day of the Lord, Dies Dominica, was chosen not from any directions noted in the scriptures, but from the Church's sense of its own power. The day of resurrection, the day of Pentecost, 50 days later, came on the first day of the week. So this would be the new Sabbath. And now fasten your seatbelts. People who think that the scriptures should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventists and keep Saturday holy. I believe that the scriptures should be the sole authority and that's why I am proudly a Seventh-day Adventist and keep the Sabbath holy. If you like this video, please make sure to send it to a friend who needs it. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave a comment and I will respond to every one of them. Thank you for listening and see you next time.